Look at this guy. Late to his own house. All right, y'all, so we're at Ivan's house today. You see, I got one of his trucks behind me. This is his 2024 Platinum F-250. See, I know the 2024's got the updated front end, the bigger headlight. Uh, this is on a four inch wicked level, 22 by 12 JTXs and graph. Show y'all the interior. This thing is super clean. It's got the big screen, panoramic roof. But as nice as this truck is, this is not his show truck. This is his 2020 F-250. Taking apart right now. You saw he's got the paint match tail lights, paint match third brake light, paint match headlights. So over here we got some powdered diff covers, powdered intercooler, and uh, powdered four inch cool springs. You see he's got his powdered intake under the hood. And right now he's on 20s and 38s. But show season is coming up quick. So he went and he got some 18 by nine fuel Mavericks. He's gonna put these on. Y'all gonna see Evan a lot. We go to a lot of the big shows together. Kind of started my YouTube journey last year, about halfway through show season. So I think y'all might have seen about two videos of us, but we plan to hit a lot more shows this year, starting with scraping here in about two weeks. So I'm gonna try to give him a hand tonight on his truck. He called me, he wants some help putting the steering together and some powder parts he got in. But y'all stick around to the end of the video because I have been keeping a secret about the lift kit that I picked up for my truck. Y'all know I've been on the FTS for about a year and a half now, maybe two years. And I love it, it's treated me well, it rides great, looks great, but uh, it might be time for it to go. All right, so you can't complete a project without running to the parts store at least one time. That's what we had to do, get some diff fluid. And uh, we found Ivan's drawers over here. Look at these boys, Fruit of the Loom. Y'all let me know what kind of stain that is right there. The other one. <laughs> All right, right there. All right, so it's about midnight. I'm inside of a 35 inch Venom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like land on my head. We gotta put Ivan in this thing. Ivan, we have a great idea. You have to come try it out. All right, give him a push. <laughs> that was worse than mine, I can't lie. Something about being in a shop just makes the truck look so much better. All right, YouTube, it is the next day, and it's time for me to show y'all what I've been hiding for about a month now. But just got a package in. I've been waiting on this for a minute. I'm going to show y'all what this is real quick, install it, super fast install, and then show y'all the new lift. So this is nothing big, not a really huge part, but this is something I thought was really cool. I found it in a 99 to 06 GM Facebook group. I reached out to Adam. He is the owner of Deck Down. Don't say that too fast, might end up saying something else. But I saw this in the Facebook group. I really liked it. I reached out to Adam. I said, send one out. I'll show it to you guys on the channel and see if what y'all think of it. So you can see here on the card, it says deck down marine products. I'm not sure what the actual term for this stuff is, but it's like the foam flooring that you put on boats. So here's what he came up with using scrap material from his business. So if we go right in here, you can see this foam pad will fit right in to my full center console. Uh, he does have options for the jump seat. This truck did have that starting out, but I swapped in the full center console a couple years ago. So this factory rubber mat, it kind of just slides around, comes in and out real easy. You see it collects dust, but this foam pad that Adam sent me has 3M tape on the back. It sits in there really well. You can see it fits good. And he can custom engrave anything that you want in the pad. I just went with the Chevy logo just because it's simple, it's clean, it looks the best. All right, so the factory pad, of course, useless. Don't need it no more. Um, we'll wipe this out real quick just get the dust out so this 3m tape can stick good y'all can see 3m not cheaping out this is the real deal all you gotta do is peel that back make sure it's lined up so y'all can see it it looks good it's a step up from factory for sure this foam color really matches my interior color and it's cool just to have a little bit more customization on the interior of the truck like i was saying earlier this is for the full center console model but if you have the jump seat in the middle he sells one for that also. So y'all can see this is the color I went with. And he also did just send it like a tan brown color, probably because it's just the most common. But he has a ton of colors to offer. This is his business card. I will also link everything of Adam's in the description of this video. So y'all go check that out. But it is time to get to the main point of this video. This is it. It's dirty right now. And I bet 90% of you guys don't even know what it is. But this is a 10 to 12 inch bulletproof lift kit for a 2001 to 2010 Duramax. 
My truck is not a Duramax. It just takes a 2500 HD lift kit. The FTS is for a 2001 to 2010 Silverado Sierra Duramax, not 9906. So I'm gonna walk you guys through this just a little bit, show y'all what I got and uh, what I'm thinking. All right, so starting up front, this is the front cross member. This is the equivalent to the chrome piece on my FTS. And on most lift kits, these do come apart. They separate from the rear cross member skid plates and everything. I've never seen this. The front cross member and rear cross member and a bunch of these other brackets are all one piece. What that means for me is that I cannot chrome the front cross member unless I wanted to chrome the front, the rear, and the skid plate bars down there, which is a little unfortunate because I bought this thinking that I could chrome the front cross member. It looked really good, just like my FTS, but a whole lot bigger. I have been told that you can chrome this front cross member if you cut those two skid plate bars off, grind it down smooth. I think Shoe God did that on his new Avalanche. Looks really good. I'm just not sure if I want to go that route. Next, as you can see right here, this does come factory with Heim joint steering, which I'm super excited for because I'm genuinely surprised that these baby tie rods have lasted this long on my FTS with a wheel and tire setup this big. So the plan was to get kryptonite tie rod sleeves, but if I install this lift kit, I no longer need that. Next, we'll go to the keys. These are Ford keys. If anyone doesn't know about Ford keys, these trucks come factory with a stock key. You can replace them with a three inch leveling key. That's basically a leveling kit on these torsion bar trucks. And then some people go all out and they put keys from an F-150, I believe. Don't kill me if I'm wrong about that, but I believe these are from the F-150, I don't know what year. And usually your upper ball joint, lower ball joint, and tie rod angles aren't the best when you run these, but some people trade that off for lift height. This kit did come with four King Resi shocks. If y'all know anything about King, or even if you don't, these are top of the line. I would put these even above Fox. Kings are super expensive, and I was so excited to get these with the lift. I believe I looked these up a while back when I first picked this lift up. And the four of these that I do have retail for almost $3,000, which is insane to think about, but I'll put a screenshot right here just to prove it. They will need a little bit of a cleaning. Maybe they need to be polished up a little bit, but either way, I'm super excited to get those on. Y'all will have to excuse me. This thing is really dirty. It's been sitting in the shed for a minute, and I didn't feel like washing it up when I got it because we're going to be sending it off to powder anyways. That's another thing I want y'all's help on deciding. I love the red on my FTS. I think it matches my truck great. Do we stick with the red on the Bulletproof? So next we have factory spindles. This is a drop bracket lift. So it actually drops the upper control arm down to a factory height. Y'all can see this is a way bigger spindle. It mounts to the lower control arm and reaches all the way up there to the upper control arm. It just makes this little extension right here a little bit longer. I don't wanna show you guys too much, but my blue truck right here that we are lowing right now did have three inch lift spindles on it. So excuse the mess, but this is the hub off of the blue truck. You can see these definitely do sit a little bit taller than the factory size spindles. And with these being a three inch spindle, I'm really thinking that I'll make this lift like a 13 to 15, which is absolutely insane to think about considering how big it sits on just a seven to nine. This would be double the size of my FTS. So the last two things I wanna mention is the torsion bar drop and the shock hoops. So on my FTS, these shocks mount to the factory location on the frame down to the lower control arm. On the Bulletproof, these are gonna mount on the upper control arm to the shock hoop in the fender well. One of the last things I wanna show you guys is the size difference of this torsion drop compared to my FTS. So this is the torsion drop on my FTS. This drops the torsion bar so they can mount flat with the lower control arm. I love the FTS logo in it. I think these are just the perfect size. And these guys right here, I just think they are so ugly. So to give you a little comparison, this is the FTS next to the Bulletproof. That's insane. I really want you guys to let me know what you think about the lift, about that torsion bar drop, and about the shock hoops. Because if I'm being honest, the torsion bar drop is what's keeping me from putting this lift on the truck. They just look so bulky and they're kind of ugly if I'm being honest. My friend Carson has a 12 to 14 twisted suspension lift on his OBS. And I personally think even though his torsion drops are bigger than mine, they still look way better because of that angle they have to them. Whereas these are just a big triangle with some bullet holes in them. I definitely could have a plate made right here, maybe bolt in a little logo or something. Y'all just gotta let me know what you wanna see. Y'all let me know what you think about this lift. I've been back and forth on it for a long time now. It's crazy to think that with these three inch spindles and my three inch keys, this truck could sit about 16 inches in the air with this lift on. This would definitely be a project for after scraping the coast. But if y'all wanted to see this, maybe I could have this put on before we do our show in Fayette. A lot of you guys have been asking me and Austin about our next show. It will be the same venue, the Fayette Multipurpose Complex, but this time we will rent out the inside of the building for a VIP and vendor booth. If you are a vendor in the Southeast and you want in the show, please reach out to me at Austin on Instagram. Our links are in the description. 
We'd love to have some vendors out there, but either way, I think we can definitely fill up the inside with just VIP spots. All right, guys, I really don't know where I'm at right now. Just went exploring, but we're going to wrap this video up. Y'all let me know what you think about the new lift, what we should do with it. Should we stay with the FTS or get that powdered and which color? If you are new, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'm trying to drop two videos a week all summer long. The goal right now is 10K subscribers by the end of June. Follow all of my socials. They're always linked in the description of every video. Thank y'all for being here, and I will see y'all in the next one.